What is up, JL Life? Model here. Today we're doing some upgrades to Heathen. One ton equivalent heavy duty steering from Synergy. So me and Misty, typically we don't like to do the same thing Synergy, but occasionally we will, but we like to go different routes so everyone can compare and contrast and get an honest opinion on it. But so, let's check this out. So here it is. Came with the drag link, the tie rod, steering stabilizer relocation bracket, the stabilizer itself. There it is. Well, let's talk about the drag link first. It is one and a half inch diameter, quarter inch thick walls DOM tubing. Uh, once it is installed, once it is installed, you can adjust it while it's still in the Jeep. You do not have to drop it to adjust it. And all done through the adjuster sleeve right here. Just same manner how the stock one worked. You loosen the pinch seam bolt, bolt and you can adjust this guy right here. Another really cool thing about this kit is that it comes with top knuckle mount for high steering uh, if you need it. Um, of course, this one you have to drill in. It comes with the sleeve that you drop in top. Um, we're not installing that in Misty's today because she doesn't need it. She's not high enough for it quite yet. But when the option is there, uh, we don't have to buy additional parts. We just will pull this out, drill it out, drop in the sleeve, and bolt it in from the top. Voila. However, make sure if you're going to do that, you get the track bar relocation bracket. You want your track bar and your drag link at the same angle. Otherwise, you're going to start having death wobble issues. Uh, I contacted Synergy already. They actually said that should be ready in about a week or two. So it's it's close. Um, but there it is. It's pretty pretty stout. I, I have no complaints about it. Uh, however, when I was installing it and I was torquing down these guys, some of the powder coating or paint was chipping off of it. Here's some of that chipping I told you about. I didn't over torque it. I went to 90 pounds per square foot like the instructions called for um, but yeah uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is the tie rod so the tie rod is again one and a half inch diameter uh, quarter inch walls chromoly it is heat treated after the bending operation to stress relieve and to harden um, it makes it a lot more stronger than a normal material like this uh, it has single plane tie rod ends to help with the wobble. Um, and of course we also have the optional uh, stabilizer relocation bracket that comes on it right over here. And the other end on this side, obviously. Uh, insulation was relatively easy. However, it was not as simple as the steer smarts. Um, but of course, this was not difficult at all. Um, once it is installed, it is easy to adjust. So no real complaints from there. Um, next, we're gonna talk about the tie rod ends themselves. They are designed and based off of the GM one ton tie rod ends. Uh, they're 114 threaded, preloaded internal springs designed to keep the joint tight as the internal bearings wear. Full metal on metal design, eliminating the factory nylon bearing race commonly fails. I'll include a picture showing you the design of this. Uh, specially designed grease grooves in the ball to allow for maximum lubrication. Forged bearing housing made of heat treated 1018. Ball studded larger than the stock tie rod end. Forged from 4110 and heat treated tear and wear resistant grease boots. And one thing that is um, really awesome about this kit over the steer smarts are the tie rod ends. So tie rod ends, they're going to fail. It is a matter of time. Now, you guys know I have steer smarts of mine and I'm not really gonna get into a comparison of the two right now, but when steer smarts fails and you have to replace a tie rod end, it is roughly 200 bucks, $180 to replace a tie rod end. Replacing a tie rod end on this system is $30. So when the joints go bad, you're gonna to have to buy a new tie rod end and it really depends if you wanna spend $180 an end or 30. 
Um, as far as longevity and how these work out, we'll let you guys know. Uh, this is not a review. This is an installation, an overview. Um, and let you guys know what's out there and how to get it installed. So, um, if you guys are interested in this kit, stay tuned. Watch us install and... Yeah. So we have three parts we're replacing today, therefore we got three parts we're taking out today. We will be removing the drag link, the tie rod, and the stabilizer. We already crunched the boot, we got one to replace it. Hell of a lot easier doing this with the tires off. Of course, got it jacked up. I rock. Do it. So, this stabilizer is super banged up, wobble wobble, but it feels like it's still, feels like it still works good. Okay, those are loose. Got the stabilizer and I don't feel good, so time to call Mo. Hey babe, can you come help me with my drag link and tie rod, please? I don't feel good. Babe. Hello? Huh? Drag link. Babe. Yeah, yeah. I'll be I'll out be here up. waiting. I'll be out there. <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> so, what we're going to see is in a million other YouTube videos, we're going to be removing the drag link and the tie rod. Almost had a sneeze. Um, the ball joints will actually rotate if you get too loose with it. See if this one does it. There you go. So the ball joint, the TRE, is actually rotating with it. Um, so instead of using a pair of pliers, 10 mil wrench will actually fit the top just fine. I'll be able to get that out. Once you start getting to the top, leave a few threads on so the tie rod and the drag link don't just all drop at once. Uh, we're going to loosen up the drag link as well while we're here, and we're going to get to the other side. So we're getting the driver's side of the tie rod right now. I got to say, so far, all of these joints were incredibly loose. Um, haven't messed with any of them, and we haven't messed with Missy's steering at all. So, yeah, that was a little concerning. down, reach over, take it off. Sometimes these don't drop out as easily as this. Sometimes you need to take a hammer to it, ballpoint hammer, a mallet. Um, if you're going to be reusing, oh man, look how loose that is. Holy moly. Woo! Again, make sure when you're hitting it with the hammer, you put the nut back on a few threads when you start tapping it from the top or the knuckle. 
to drop it so it doesn't drop, hit you in the shin. Plenty of people can attest to how much that hurts. Set that aside. Now we get the other side of the drag link out. This part be a pain in the butt, I ain't gonna lie. I've seen the JLs. I have seen people take off the drag link from the Pittman arm numerous times on the JL, and I've never once seen it done easily. So you follow the drag link arm up to the Pittman arm. There is going to be another nut that needs to be loosened. 21 mil, just like the other ones. Let's try something. Here's another tip. You can use your seat belt to hold your steering wheel in place whenever you're trying to remove the bolt on the drag link to the pitman arm to keep your steering wheel from turning. So again, this is the absolute pain in the butt side. See the pitman arm doesn't just drop out. What you can try to do is hitting the knuckle with a hammer we a ballpoint hammer but I don't have one so I'm gonna I'm, uh, it's a pickle fork thank you for the pickle fork welcome <laughs> so you very well may need a pickle fork Just know if you use the pickle fork, you're going to damage your boot. Granted, we're not reusing this drag link, so a damaged boot's not a big deal. Again, I got the nut kind of on the thread, so instead of just dropping and Breasting someone's shin or breaking my light, it's going to get caught by the nut so I can take it off when I'm ready. But again, this is a pain in the butt on the JLs. Excuse me, sir. Have you considered hitting it with your purse? Okay, so after about, lucky me, about two minutes of hammering on it, it popped loose. So we can pull out our pickle fork. Take it off one side. There it goes. So it's not as bad as the tie rod, but it's pretty loose. This side is a little stiffer. This is the side that goes to the pitman arm, but still pretty loose. And of course, once these ends go bad, it's time to replace. You also need to remove the stabilizer bracket that's connected to the axle. There are three small bolts, uses a 13 on all three. This one was kind of tight, uh, so just take your time. Ease it in. If you check out this Synergy tie rod, drag link the drag link if you check out this synergy drag link it's I mean it's a lot thicker than the stock one I mean you can just compare the two sizes of the sidewall of it so this drag link has already obviously been set to length with Missy's Jeep so we want to do the closest to this with this, so what we did, we took the measuring tape, sorry, we took the measuring tape and we measured from center 
the center and it came out to 41 just under so where's that at 41 just under 41 and so that's what we're going to want to get this to be so what you want to do when you're setting this is this side from center of bolt so the center of the tie rod end to the lip of this the drag link right here on this side it can't be more than three inches go to the other side with the sleeve as this guy right here this can't be out from the center to the lip of the drag link itself three and a half inches so we're going to do our best to get this set to just under 41 inches here's a diagram of again where you should be measuring from and to She's going to help me set the length real quick. And we'll be right back. So as you can see, we're just over 40, uh, just on 40 and 3 sixteenths about. So we're going to need to come out less than an inch and get it to just under 41. So... Where are we at? Not quite. Probably one more on each side. Okay. One. Two. Good? Yep. I'd say we're good. Okay, so we threaded in the the lock bolts on this on the sleeves of the drag link itself. Uh, it comes with castle nuts on both sides, and we're going to remove those. And you can also notice there are holes for the cotter pins. Uh, we will be using that here in a little bit. These joints come pre-greased. Another thing I like about this kit comes with instructions. So, foolproof. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, just like your stock drag link, the bend is going to go down towards passenger side, of course, facing out. Do not want it facing in. You want to slide in. Uh, get one side in. Need a castle nut, please. Hand tighten it from the top. Now, there we go. Slide over to the other side. What's another awesome thing about this kit? I got it. <laughs> Another awesome thing about this kit, it comes with all the hardware to do a flip kit. So if you wanted to do a, excuse me, if you wanted to go top knuckle, it does. Of course, it becomes with a little bit more work. This is the sleeve. You're going to have to drill out the top of the knuckle. This drops in. You rotate the, the TRE. And it drops in from the top. Um, and the Steer Smarts, they come with the the sleeve that doesn't require drilling. So when you, if you decide to go back to bottom knuckle, like I did, you can. But we will definitely save this for when Missy's ready to go top knuckle steer. She's not high enough to need that yet. So. Anyways, uh, now that we're at the stage, we're going to start to tighten it down. What were the torque specs again? Castle nuts are going to be at 55 foot-pounds. Okay. Looks like these are going to be bigger than my, um, my 21. All right. Let's try 22. Unfortunately, I don't have a crow's foot 22. I don't have a crow's foot 22 to get the other end, so we're just going to have to guess. But once you've got it torqued down, you want to look for the the hole for the cotter pin. We are slightly misaligned, so we're going to have to move the castle nut. 
So whenever rotating castle nuts, it's always better to make tighter, not looser. Find out. Where are my cotter pins? Uh oh. Where are my cotter pins? Cotter pin. Whoop. Slide on through. We're gonna grab a pair of pliers, bend that up and down. We're gonna do the same to the other side. And there is side number two. All right, so what we're gonna do next, we're gonna tighten the sleeve tighteners. I doubt that's what it's called, but I like the, I like it. So that's what we're gonna do. Pinch In bolt. The, the pinch bolt, we're gonna tighten the pinch bolt. If you need to adjust, what's awesome about this kit, you don't have to drop it and thread it out further or shorter. There's an adjuster sleeve right here. Loosen the pinch, same bolt. pinch bolt. Loosen the pinch bolt, and you can rotate this with a large uh, wrench to make it longer or shorter. Again, it's important to make sure that it doesn't go further out than three and a half inches. So there's our, our mark. We don't want to go past. So we got a lot of adjusting room that we can make. In the event you ever have to go further than three and a half inches, you will need to drop it and work both sides to where you get each side within the parameters, three and a half over here and three on the other end over there. So, but we got plenty of room. I'm gonna tighten these pinch bolts. So the pinch bolts will go to torque settings of 90. Grab my torque wrench, make sure we're going tight. Hold the top. Another thing when you're installing the drag link, you want the pinch bolt side facing up on this end. Over here, you want it on the back. Vertical. And you put pants. There we go. There they go. So now we're going to be putting in the tie rod. Uh, so the orientation is going to be in the side with the the sleeve adjuster is going to be towards passenger. The pinch seams are going to be facing backwards, so the bend will be facing forward. So what we're going to do with the non-adjusted side, we are going to bottom it out going in. There will be a few threads showing, and what you're going to do is take it four threads out. Four turns. Four turns. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Of course, we're going to have to point it up. All right, so set that down. And just like on the, on the drag link, from center to the lip, you don't want this out more than three inches on the side without the adjusting sleeve. With the side with the adjusting sleeve, you don't want it out from, again, the middle to the sleeve, three and a half inches. So what we're going to do to try to get as close as possible to Mystery, Misty's factory toe in is we're going to measure her old uh, tie rod and try to get to set closely to that until we can get it properly aligned so so I'm getting ready to drop in my my pinch bolts and I noticed that they were aged by Joe thanks Joe packaged no it says aged a-g-e-d spells aged the tape tape. I have aged bolts. He aged them by hand. Yes, he did. Thank you, Joe. The pinch bolts, joints face back. Yes. Okay. So, hand tighten one side at a time. 55 and 90 for the torque wrench. So again, as you can see, the hole doesn't quite line up. 
so we're going to adjust it. Oh, these go tighter with cotter pins and castle nuts. Steering stabilizer bracket or relocation bracket, which is going to bring it from down low to up high. It's a pretty simplistic design. They replaced the track bar bolt. It's just swap in and out. Uh, the steering stabilizer is going to boot on over here. They're going to have a clamp right there. And it's going to bolt onto that. And that little bolt is going to hold it in place. And Misty went with the Fox 2.0 steering stabilizer performance series. So. I did everything kind of backwards. If I could redo this, this is the order I would do things. After taking everything out, I would put in the track bar steering stabilizer bolt first. I would then install the tie rod. After the tie rod, I would do the drag link. And the reason being, it's a lot easier to get to this guy to torque it down with this knot in the way. I actually had to use a smaller cotter pin because my drag link was in the way and I didn't want to drop it after I torqued everything down. Those are the reasons. Improvise, adapt, overcome. Let's do it. So you're just going to slip over with the steering stabilizer. We'll grab this little guy. He's going to go in there. All right, so I took Ethan for a test drive around the block, um, down one of our somewhat faster roads, got it up to about 55 miles an hour. Um, previously, I didn't have any shimmies or wobbles or anything. This time, I still have no shimmies, no wobbles, so that means everything must have been installed correctly. Yay! Um, also, before the new steering, I used to hear a little bit of popping sounds and I'm guessing that may have been from the ends. I haven't heard it yet, but it is something that I am listening for, for sure. Um, but other than that, the steering felt tighter, it felt secure, and we'll see how the rest of the life of it goes. Install took, took us, what, about four hours? Something like that. We're recording, so double the time. So if you weren't doing recording, I would venture to say, Two hour install, Probably. Two, and a half. two and a half. It wasn't very difficult. So, guys, thanks for watching. Leave a comment, like the channel, or like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Yeah. Stay tuned for more. Hit the bell with the cat. Later. <laughs> Love you guys. Oh my gosh, you're messing it up. <laughs> I don't do this in real life, okay? <laughs> do it for the tubes.